So the contents overview and architecture, um, there will be some platform features explained and there will be Tizen develop environment session and Tizen 2.0 updates and conclusion. Can you hear well, by the way? Okay. Uh, by the way, bec uh, because here, uh, here, here are my colleagues from Samsung about the kernel, kernel expert and the EFL guy and uh, community guy so from Intel. So you can uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the meantime. Okay, so this is an overview. So you know, there are many smart devices in mobile market now. And almost as many software platforms for them, like, yeah, you know, Android, iPhone, and Bada. Actually, I'm, uh, I have been involved in a Samsung Bada platform from the beginning. So I was a native guy. I, uh, after uh, Bada platform, I, uh, in, I have been involved in Tizen. Uh, by merging Bada into Tizen native framework. So I will uh, explain the history later. And you know, uh, many smart devices also appear in non-mobile market, so as well as mobile market. So we can uh, hear frequently about uh, smart device like smart car, smart TV, and smart camera. camera or even a refrigerator, for example. So what is the user expectation now? You know, there are many smart devices around the world, but uh, there is kind of discontinuity between the different devices from different categories. So because uh, the platform has been designed for a specific embedded device, and each manufacturer does not want share they are proprietary platforms. So, but you know now the user is expecting something more than this. Uh, for example, seamless user experience among devices or each collaboration between them. But uh, the current status is that uh, those kind of smart devices are not working together well. So what if there is a standard-based cross-category platform. Uh, if we have that kind of platform, the same software can run on many categories of devices with few or no changes. And device, devices can be connected more easily. And what if the platform is open source? Uh, due to, thanks to the open source uh, philosophy or community, uh, the manufacturers or even the developers can know better inside of the platform and deploy the platform on the products easily. And new features or services can be added and the platform itself will be optimized more efficiently. So you know, the platform having these two features is Tizen. So I think this is quite a quite unique position of Tizen platform uh, today. So. In short, Tizen is a standard-based cross-category platform, and also it is open source. So we have more than uh, 1,000 bits in 2.0 Tizen, and many of them are from the open source. And we will open as many uh, modules as possible. So. Uh, Please contribute much to the Taizen uh, platform. So what is cross-category platform? Uh, we have recently released 2.0 uh, release, Taizen SDK, and source codes. Uh, as of Taizen 2.0, there are two uh, profiles uh, for mobile or, and for IVI. And we will uh, extend the uh, category, device category to TV, camera, and printer, PC like that. 
So these will be future profiles. And Taizen is also a standard based. So you know, Taizen uh, is uh, heavily using W3C standard, web standard technology, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript kind of things. Uh, around, uh, we will uh, use the same technology around uh, different categories of devices. So this is the uh, basic picture of the common profile and uh, common and uh, each profile. So for each uh, type of devices, we will define the profile. So right now we just uh, defined, we are just defining mobile profile. Uh, officially, but uh, we will also define IVI, TV kind of profile. And there will be a Tizen common that will be required by all the profiles, of all the Tizen profiles. So Tizen common will provide common uh, libraries, fundamental libraries, common API, uh, packaging mechanism security and development services and tool chain like that. So, uh, with this, also the, sec, uh, the second, one, second one is that Tizen is an open source project. So as of 2.0, uh, many upstream projects are being used by Tizen. So here are just examples of the uh, open source project that is being used by Tizen. Uh, for UI and graphics, graphics, uh, X Windows, Cairo, and EFL. Alignment Foundation Library are used and for multimedia, GStreamer, Pulse Audio, OpenAir is used. And for connectivity, Common, BlueZ, LoopSoup, and Wi-Fi, Supplicant, for Web, WebKit 2, and for security, Smack and OpenSSL. So, you know, uh, there are many, many, many uh, modules that are being used by Tizen. Uh, by the way, I'd like to briefly uh, introduce uh, the Samsung's contribution to open source software. Uh, Samsung's modification to existing, we have modified the existing open source library to adapt to the Tizen. So, uh, but we have, we have contributed under the same license, Linux kernel itself, WebKit 2, EFL, GStreamer. All kinds of uh, famous libraries have been, we have contributed by the uh, Tizen project activity. And uh, uh, virtually everything newly developed by Samsung has been open sourced on the uh, APL Apache license. So this uh, actually has been the proprietary software from the beginning, but uh, we uh, open sourced almost all things under underlying the Tizen platform, like this app core, app service, uh, web runtime kind of things. And you know, uh, uh, you might have seen uh, the same slide from the yesterday's uh, keynote presentation from VP Sol from Samsung. So this is just a, a repetition of the Linux kernel contribution from Samsung. And and you know, uh, we are uh, eight rank. And Tizen is uh, very much uh, contributed by Intel also. So Intel is a uh, rank two, like this. So there are many, a uh, couple of uh, Linux kernel maintainers in Samsung. And there are many other maintainers in uh, the open source project in Samsung also. And Tizen, uh, finally, Tizen has a strong industry support. So there is a Tizen Association. And there are 12 members uh, currently from the uh, operators and manufacturers, chip vendors. So this is the Tizen Association. <laughs> they, guide the <coughs> they are guiding the industry role. And they gather the requirements for the Tizen and they identify or facilitate the service models. So we frequently uh, discuss together uh, by conference call or face-to-face uh, -face workshop 
uh, with how to improve Taizen ecosystem as a whole. Okay. And this is the release history of Taizen. So official release uh, has been uh, twice. So Taizen 1.0 was released uh, last year, April. The code name was Luxpur. And Taizen 2.0 most recently released. The name of that was Magnolia, February of this year. And the uh, uh, scope of the first release was platform source code for Web API core subsystem Linux kernel. I will introduce the architecture later. And SDK also. And uh, for the Taizen Magnolia scope, uh, many new features and improvements uh, have been made for that. So especially platform uh, side uh, C++ native framework uh, was newly introduced, and many uh, SDK features also uh, being enhanced. What is the roadmap? Uh, currently, we are uh, try, uh, we are doing hard things to get the 2.1 release done before at the end of this month. So. Tizen 2 that will come soon. Uh, Q2 or uh, hopefully uh, end of this month or early next month with some uh, minor improvements with account management or app installing service. And app widget is just a kind of a live box that uh, any application feeds they, their data into the small uh, section of the home screen. And uh, there will be many performance optimization and security enhancement. And although not fixed yet, but uh, Tizen 3.0 will be uh, maybe released uh, early uh, next year. So it is not fixed yet, but uh, we are uh, discussing many uh, new things, innovative things to be released to Tizen 3.0. And uh, right after 2.1, uh, we will uh, more uh, actively uh, open source of uh, modules and will uh, let the individual developers participate, collaborate to make the 3.0 together. And you know, uh, there will be a Tizen developer conference uh, next, next month, May, in San Francisco, Hilton Hotel. So we will announce uh, the uh, open source development model from 2.1 to 3.0. So please uh, visit uh, that conference also to discuss freely about how to make the Taizen uh, improve much. And this is a very uh, basic URLs of Taizen. Uh, you can visit uh, this site. And uh, there are communities now, but uh, Actually, it is not uh, much active because uh, we have been focusing on stabilizing the uh, 2.0 release until now. But uh, after 2.0 or 2.1, we will uh, more open our uh, project and we will uh, encourage all the developers to communicate with each other. Okay. So uh, until now, I have been, uh, I introduced the uh, concept or unique position of Taizen and release history. And from now, I'd, I'd like to introduce the Taizen architecture, especially uh, from mobile uh, profile perspective, because uh, we are uh, not yet, uh, we are yet defining the other profiles, but uh, for mobile, we have been uh, improving very much, and it is very stable. So I think uh, it is uh, better uh, to focus on the mobile section uh, right now. OK, so this is the architecture overview. Tizen uh, has, of course, uh, based on Linux kernel 3.0 device drivers. This is kernel layer. Uh, Tizen has two layers on top of Linux, which is a core and a framework layer. 
So on top of core, there are a web framework and a native framework. Web framework has been there from the early, uh, from the very beginning of the Tizen. But a native framework uh, has been newly introduced in 2.0 release. And there, so, so that we can, uh, any, any developer can develop their application in web framework or by using native framework. Or they can even uh, use both to make some hybrid application kind of things. So this uh, red line is a public API public interface. And core is the underlying layer that provides most common things to the framework. Okay. So for web framework, uh, web framework provides state of art HTML5, W3C APIs, and uh, most uh, well used uh, web UI framework. And additional uh, Tizen device API extension. A native framework is based on object oriented C and supports full featured native app development by uh, providing many uh, services like a background service, so IP push, and TTS, and uh, yeah, kind of things. I will touch uh, each uh, layer or each framework uh, a little bit more detail later. The core is an underlying layer for web and native, uh, providing common functionalities and security mechanisms. Uh, at the kernel and hardware adaptation layer, uh, we have defined uh, many plugins so that uh, any vendors, any manufacturer can plug in their own component into each plugin so that uh, the Tizen uh, itself can uh, correctly run uh, without depending on the, uh, each specific uh, plugin implementation as long as the plugin interface is uh, satisfied. And we also have OpenGL e ES uh, EGL graphics driver here. And many kind of kernel layer optimization has been made. So uh, for example, uh, in the next section, uh, Mr. Han from Samsung will uh, introduce uh, optimization for the memory management, for example. I'd like to briefly compare uh, the difference between web and native framework. So uh, this is the snapshot from the uh, bigger picture. So this, this is web framework and this is native framework. Uh, native and web framework is not uh, Competitive but uh, complementary uh, each to each other for Tizen ecosystem because you know web is strong in uh, portability and ease of uh, app development and you know minimal learning curve across uh, various devices because web itself is a very standard based and you know the uh, strengths of relative strengths of native is. Uh, performance, memory consumption, and the diversity of features provided. And uh, because 2.0, uh, native framework uh, newly introduced, I'd like to more address native framework to you. And uh, you can uh, refer to uh, the web framework features or concept technologies. Uh, there are many uh, well-documented uh, presentation out there for example, last year's uh, Tizen Developer Conference, or uh, as I introduced my the URL for the Tizen, yeah, so you can uh, visit here to find many blogs and uh, developer guide. So why native framework? Uh, native framework gives a chance to the developers to reuse exi existing engine or libraries written in C and C++. You know, Linux has many, uh, is based on C, and there are many uh, open sources in C and C++. So uh, you can reuse uh, those kind of uh, off-the-shelf uh, libraries uh, as it is, because we uh, guarantee we provide the standard C, C++ in native framework. And uh, 
actually Samsung has promised to uh, Bada developers uh, to migrate, to uh, keep the source level compatibility between uh, Bada 2.0 and the Tizen native. So we, try, uh, we have always tried to uh, keep the source level compatibility. <coughs> Although it is not 100%, but uh, we have uh, developed a migration tool and guide for the Bada uh, 2.0 app developers to easily migrate to Tizen native. And uh, there are many features uh, provided by native framework, but uh, only the uh, portion of the overhead by introducing this framework is less than 5% of total image size. For example, a web framework is about 10% uh, of total image size. And another is uh, core and lens kernel itself and uh, uh, kind of preloaded applications. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to compare native framework with underlying core. Okay, so I have explained that uh, there are two layers on top of Linux, and the underlying la layer we call a uh, core, and the upper layers we call a uh, framework. And this is native framework, and this is core. So why why do we have to provide uh, two different uh, native stack? Because you know, core itself is uh, based on C, and both are native in nature. But uh, because they are focusing on uh, different aspects, so core focuses on the providing common functionalities to uh, upper layer frameworks, and focuses more on optimization in terms of performance, power, uh, etc. Uh, we can do this because uh, core is free from uh, guaranteeing uh, ABC. We call it ABC, uh, which is abbreviation for uh, application binary compatibility. Usually people call this as BBC, backward, backward binary compatibility, right? So what is the ABC or BBC? It is just a uh, a promise that uh, the older application, older application running on the older platform should run correctly on the newer platform without any kind of uh, modification from developers. To ensure the uh, Tizen app store uh, behave well, or we cannot uh, persuade each developer to rewrite their application or recompile their application. Once they submit their application, it will be done. So this is the promise we uh, give to the uh, developers as a native framework provider. But you know, core, because uh, public API is provided by native framework and web framework, not the core itself. So core is uh, free from. Uh, guaranteeing the ABC. So we can uh, freely optimize or we can even uh, change the signature of the each function. But uh, because, uh, uh, in other words, native framework itself uh, should uh, guarantee ABC, binary compatibility. And it because of uh, its nature, it should provide the uh, productivity of application development. Uh, with a well-documented API reference, developer guide, and sample course, and kind of associated tools to easily make the application like a UI builder, UI effect builder kind of things. So I think uh, be uh, because of this, uh, we should, uh, there should be enough reason to provide a application framework and a separate uh, core framework in addition to the web framework. Uh, this the, uh, is the uh, last slide before the platform features for each. Uh, this is the uh, types of applications uh, of Tizen as of 2.0. So there are uh, web and native applications, and there are also core applications. So web and native applications are, uh, I mean, uh, just a normal third-party developer uh, applications. So uh, these applications 
should use only uh, public APIs to get full support of uh, package install upgrade, download from the App Store, and security, and backward compatibility, and so on. Because we have designed that uh, only the public API guarantees uh, that kind of uh, uh, compatibility. And we also man, uh, give many sample apps uh, to the SDK. Uh, but uh, uh, core application is a different word. So, you know, core application, core, there is no uh, public API provided by core. But uh, I like say this as a core application here because <laughs> uh, in contrast to the framework, core framework uh, pro, uh, gives uh, has much more features provided, like a telephone. Uh, hundreds of uh, different kind of subtle APIs are there, and uh, there are also uh, many device functionalities in the core layer, um, like a multimedia uh, and uh, security and system. So uh, from the device manufacturer's point of view, uh, it, uh, the framework itself will not be enough to uh, develop a full uh, fledged uh, applications, uh, preloaded applications. So, uh, so uh, in, order for, in order to uh, encourage the uh, full featured application, I mean preloaded application uh, with the device release, so we are uh, uh, giving kind of uh, core sample applications and core reference applications to the uh, open source uh, Git, for example. So uh, core application is uh, applications using core APIs to fully utilize device cap capabilities and usually implemented and preloaded by device implementers. But uh, backward compatibility is not guaranteed. So uh, whenever the platform itself is upgraded, the, uh, each preloaded application should be rewritten or recompiled to adapt to uh, that uh, new newer platform. So uh, there are uh, pros and cons of uh, web and native applications and the core applications. So we are uh, focusing on each balance on the each framework and the core. So there will be many uh, documents. Uh, around whole layer. OK, so uh, that was a brief overview of the platform uh, architecture. And I'd like to uh, introduce more uh, one-step detail into the uh, each framework. So this is the web framework features. Actually, there has been a good uh, presentation from uh, Sakari from Intel and Taylor from Samsung. Last year's uh, Tizen Developer Conference. So I will share the URL. And you know, uh, in the last year's uh, Developer Conference, as well as uh, another Linux uh, Foundation hosted uh, conference, there are many uh, videos you can always access and you can learn from uh, them. So, because, uh, sorry. There was a very good uh, presentation from them, so you can uh, please uh, visit the URL and you can see the details of the uh, web framework. Anyway, uh, web framework uh, comprises standard HTML5 based API plus a Tizen device specific <coughs> extension plus a widely used supplementary API. So there is a, a documentation in developer site of Python. Uh, you can uh, also refer to this. So uh, we are providing as many uh, APIs as possible to standardize, uh, to standardize uh, uh, W3C API. And there are uh, also device specific API extension that uh, accesses to the underlying device capability like uh, NFC, Bluetooth, yeah, or power controls, for example. 
And uh, there are miscellaneous uh, APIs also provided, like uh, WebGL for 3D gaming, for example, or Viewport, or a full screen API from Mozilla and Typed Array. I'd like to stress that uh, Tizen and Web APIs are not forking W3C APIs. We just uh, follow uh, W3C standard. We actually are uh, actively uh, involved in the standardization itself. So, for example, uh, there are a uh, system application working group in uh, W3C that uh, tries to standardize the device API. Because, uh, you know, W3C standard is uh, improving very much, but uh, lacks some kind of device uh, functionality and the security. So uh, the device API itself will be also be standardized so that uh, the web framework itself can be uh, much more meaningful and uh, uh, portable. So uh, this is the uh, latest score from the html5test.com. So as, as you see in this slide, uh, Tizen 2.0 has top score from uh, the uh, 500 uh, point uh, Tizen 2 uh, marked at 492 uh, with bonus 16. And uh, it, is, uh, it has been always top uh, from uh, the 1.0 area era and uh, this shows that uh, how many uh, efforts we have been putting together to uh, fully uh, support the standardization of the uh, web uh, stand, uh, web technology and I'd like to also uh, say that uh, web uh, uh, web uh, performance perspective, so we have been uh, optimizing many uh, kind of uh, modules uh, to be optimized. So I mean, web 2D and 3D graphics also uh, has been uh, uh, contributing those kind of acti optimization activities. So for example, 2D graphics, web 2D graphics is based on the uh, WebKit EFL port. So there's a Cairo OpenGL ES backend there. So, you know, there is a Web 2D and Web 3D standard already there. So, uh, uh, conventionally, traditionally, Web has some uh, poor performance in the graphics area, but uh, because due to the optimization effort, uh, 2D camera's performance score uh, as of uh, last uh, December was to that. Uh, 15 uh, compared to 1.15 from the uh, Android uh, browser on the same hardware. And you know the WebGL, uh, there uh, we have con conducted a uh, 3D WebGL uh, performance test by the uh, frame per second. So this is the uh, demo from using the WebGL technology uh, is a Google uh, Aquarium example. So uh, this uh, shows that Tizen uh, has uh, 28 frames per second compared to 16 from uh, Android browser on the same hardware. And there are uh, also another related uh, uh, example of fish tank from uh, Microsoft or speed reading or yeah, asteroid bench. So we have a similar uh, performance measure in this uh, area also. We also uh, have been uh, upgraded uh, from uh, WebKit 1 to WebKit 2 for, uh, as we ship to Tizen 2.0 for more stability of the web application and for more uh, responsiveness responsiveness of the web application. You know, because uh, in the WebKit 1, uh, WebKit just uh, in, in process library so that uh, web application itself and the WebKit uh, runs on the same process. So any kind of, uh, if we plug in some uh, modules to the browser, then uh, the plugin itself can 
make some crash. But uh, uh, thanks to the open source activity, WebKit 2 has been uh, there. So we utilize the WebKit 2 in the uh, Tizen web runtime and the Tizen web browser also. So by the nature of WebKit 2, uh, there will be a UI process, web process, and the plugin process separated each other so that uh, plugin process cannot uh, crash the application itself. And you know, the API itself from the WebKit uh, to WebKit 2 has been completely changed to, uh, from blocking API to non-blocking API. So there is a kind of a binary break, compatibility break between yeah, one and two. But uh, because of the non-blocking API, you know, non-blocking API gives much uh, responsiveness because we can, we don't need to wait for the uh, API result to come. We can just do another thing while, while waiting for the uh, result from the previous API invocation. So, Python is actively using the WebKit 2 as its runtime. And I'd like to say there are many more features and to be introduced. Uh, actually, it is uh, in the appendix, but uh, because this is the Python overview, I'd like to skip the details and I'd like to let I'd like to uh, encourage, you, encourage you to visit the uh, URL of the uh, Taizen developer site. And this is the uh, platform features uh, of native framework. So Taizen native framework uh, released with Taizen 2.0 uh, provides uh, many set of uh, na na uh, C++ namespaces with uh, more than 10,000 open APIs, like a base IO, uh, there will be some uh, the namespaces uh, in the next slide. Uh, along with these uh, C++ uh, proprietary APIs, uh, we are also providing popular uh, standard open source libraries like uh, glibc, libstandard C++, libxml, openglis, and openal, openmp also. So the, these two slides are summary of the C++ namespaces. Although uh, this is a quite uh, some improvement from the existing BADA API, uh, but uh, this is actually a proprietary API designed by ourselves uh, from the BADA uh, platform. But uh, you know, uh, although the API itself is not standardized uh, as the older native uh, API is, but the source, uh, uh, the underlying implementation of this API is open sourced. So you can uh, uh, contribute the modification of uh, this API implementation. So actually from uh, at the time of BADA platform, we have been uh, using uh, a real-time OS underlying uh, and uh, shifting from uh, as we shift to Tizen native, we completely rewrote, re-implement the uh, C++ API implementation by using the uh, core API and the Linux API and the standard API. So these are just brief introduction of the uh, namespaces, like a collection, runtime utility, you know, there are standard uh, C++ collection, uh, so we also give some kind of utility that you can convert between the uh, standard collection and the uh, uh, Tizen native collection. And Tizen uh, text uh, gives uh, character encoding, I.O., locator and system. And we give uh, the application framework and package management and there are security features and graphics and media and UI and UI extension. Uh, I will uh, touch this topic briefly later. And there are network telephony messaging and uh, native web. And this is a web uh, we call web control, embedded web view kind of things. And there are uh, services also. Uh, I think. Uh, 
uh, as of next re release, I mean 3.0 next year, we'll uh, equip with uh, more uh, services from the web and the C++. Uh, native framework features I'd like to briefly cover. The first slide is F framework. So we provide uh, two different application model, which is UI application and the service application. Service application is uh, very similar to the service of Android. So app without UI, so that always sits in the background to monitor something and to communicate with a UI app, for example. So this is a base class uh, launched by UI app is launched by main, main menu, task manager, other apps and condition, but service app can launch on boot uh, by its property specified in the manifest. Or other apps can invoke, uh, launch the uh, service app, and it can also conditionally launch, like a time-based uh, or period, period time-based, or if you plug in some uh, serial port, then the corresponding app can uh, be launched, for example. And there is a package manager so that uh, it provides the install, uninstall, and upgrade of third-party application from store client. And uh, in the back end, there is a, a web runtime installer and a TPK installer. TPK is the, just a file extension, name of the file extension for the native uh, framework, native application, uh, which is a Tizen package. So, uh, and also, there is an uh, internal uh, package database that manages all the uh, installed applications regardless of uh, its from native or web. Uh, so any uh, other kind of third-party application can get the uh, installed package info, for example, by using the API from package manager. So, for example, you can uh, you, you can write a uh, third-party home screen, menu screen, by using this API. And there are many uh, kinds of inter-application communication facilities provided. So, uh, as I explained, the conditional app launch, app control, and data control. App control is uh, very much like the intent from Android, so that uh, the existing application borrows its UI to other application. And data control is uh, just uh, providing uh, its own data to other application with access control. Uh, and we also uh, support the multi-processing uh, library, open source library. Uh, as of 2.0, we only uh, gives uh, or provides OpenMP and GCD. And you know, uh, the trend is for mobile devices that are getting more uh, number of cores uh, embedded in the device. So uh, to fully utilize that kind of uh, multi-core, we should uh, provide these kind of uh, parallel uh, libraries. So, you know, uh, actually uh, we are uh, providing two different kind of tool chains, I mean compiler, so GCC, uh, and uh, LLVM, Clang, I mean. So OpenMP uh, correctly runs on GCC as of now, and GCD uh, from Apple, it, this correctly runs from Clang. Because you know uh, GCD uh, has some uh, Clang uh, native uh, directive. Anyway, uh, uh, we uh, support this kind of multiprocessing library. We also uh, support standard libraries, standard C and C++, as are uh, standardized by uh, these. So you can uh, refer to this later. And graphics is not much uh, uh, special. So it's uh, very comparable to other existing platforms. So I'd like to uh, skip. But there's uh, for the uh, application developers' uh, convenience, we give some interesting uh, feature like canvas texture and the video texture, so that you can draw 2D primitives onto texture directly, or you can play video streams onto texture. 
so that a uh, user can uh, have some interesting experience. And there are many uh, native UI controls like this, and we also support accessibility uh, for the disabled person, for example, like a screen reader and a voiceover and a high contrast mode. And apps can create themes uh, uh, by themselves for app customization, like uh, branding uh, its own color. And there is also partial screen app support so that uh, uh, every application does not need to be full screen, so there will be some uh, small screen floating around the yeah, uh, background application. So we give this kind of uh, functionality. And there are scene management and data binding like MVC. So UI workflow design yeah, gets easier by this uh, framework. And for the UI scalability, we give the layout feature and the multi-resolution uh, based on the logical coordinate. But uh, uh, currently, we are focusing on two different uh, resolutions, which is HD and uh, WVGA. Uh, compared to native web, it uh, gives more, much more flexibility in terms of UI scalability by using meta tag, uh, viewport, viewport. So uh, we should uh, pursue more uh, scalability support here. And there is also input method framework that a uh, third party can develop their own uh, soft keyboard, for example. And animation and visual element also there, and UI effect engine also. So this is a visual element provided by native framework. You can just look at this. Uh, kind of very similar that is provided by EFL under, uh, from the core layer, but uh, from uh, the uh, public framework perspective also we give uh, this kind of uh, animation features that we call as a visual element. And this is the, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, image flow. Yeah, this is the uh, kiosk, kiosk demo by using the visual element. So you can look, feel uh, what kind of uh, application can be made by using this. OK, so uh, and there also is a UI extension like vision, sensor, speech, so face detection, tracking, recognition. Uh, image recognition and QR code uh, tracking and recognition also there, already provided by 2.0. Uh, we also provide many types of sensors like uh, acceleration, magnetic, uh, proximity. And uh, there is also a high level uh, API based on sensor like motion API such as snap, shaking, double tap. And we also give speech to text and text to speech uh, functionality here. Yeah. And sure, uh, there is a notification manager and app widget. As I explained, app widget, uh, this is kind of a conventional, looks like conventional web based widget, but it's actually uh, a web frame, web application, or a native application either can provide uh, this kind of uh, data to the home screen section. So this uh, is a common functionality. So uh, yeah, I think uh, most uh, current, uh, current user will uh, like this kind of feature. And there is a notification area. So there is a quick, pa quick panel frame area and notification area. So, so that uh, application can make their customized UI like an uh, icon, a message like this. And quick panel frame area gives a kind of mini control over the application's functionality. So like, for example, uh, MP3 player, you can skip to next song or something like that. So this is uh, provided as an API. Okay. And 
Lastly, there's a web frame, uh, web uh, control provided by native framework. So we can call this as a kind of a hybrid application because, you know, the uh, native application can embed the web content that can be rendered by the underlying web runtime. So by the uh, nature of the uh, Tizen's uh, powerful web runtime, because uh, the native web control like this, just fully utilize the underlying web runtime from the uh, Tizen web framework and the core. So it gives very much uh, many, many kinds of uh, features and APIs, yeah, including this. Uh, another kind of hybrid application we can think of is that uh, we can make a web application and we can make a native application as a background service. We can make a UI-based web application and we can package them together as a single package. So this is uh, completely feasible in the technic uh, technical sense. So I hope uh, there will be some uh, uh, documentation and sample for that so that you can use. Okay, so it will be uh, released soon, I think. And lastly, uh, the features from the core layer, underlying uh, common layer. So uh, core has um, very many open sources library and also proprietary uh, modules from uh, Samsung and Intel. And there are 12 uh, boxes here. Uh, so I I like I don't like to touch every detail here, but you can look at uh, all kinds of functionalities uh, provided by this layer. And you know the uh, uh, green uh, characters uh, represent the plugin pluggable architecture. So these kind of modules can be can use the pluggable uh, pluggable in, plugin implementation so that uh, the uh, manufacturer can differentiate uh, its feature by uh, plugging into uh, this kind of modules. Okay. And Tizen also wants a secure platform. So in the kernel side, this uh, smack is also open source embedded into the Linux kernel, which uh, is mainly driven by Intel. And SMAG is a simple mandatory access uh, control. So uh, it is a per process access control. So web runtime itself uh, can enforce fine grained access control for each web app. So only allowed resources can be accessed, for example. So there will be uh, the resources here, like. And uh, each web application will uh, take its own process, like this and like this. And the SMAC rule specifies that uh, only some uh, process or subject can uh, access the resources or object. So that uh, process B can access the system resources, but process A cannot. So this kind of uh, security access control is uh, provided by uh, in the underlying layer. And also from the application framework layer, there is uh, another uh, uh, access uh, API invocation access control mechanism called privilege. And there is a privilege to smack relationship uh, automatic translation at the time of installation, but uh, I'd like to skip uh, the details here. And you know, uh, EFL is a very uh, uh, successful uh, open source library. Uh, so uh, there are EFL is uh, consta constantly being uh, improved. So by the nature of the EFL, uh, many uh, preloaded applications are benefiting from them, uh, from the graphics or U UI perspective. So EFL is actually based on uh, retained mode, not immediate mode. And there is a smooth animation with a very uh, low processing power and a hardware accelerated by the OpenGL backend. So compared to the immediate mode, uh, retained mode can composite together uh, different scenes 
so that uh, uh, the hidden area, undrawn area, can be uh, uh, efficient from the uh, power or performance perspective. All right. And uh, EFL also uh, gives a uh, kind of uh, a video, a rich effect with video. So, you can uh, play the video and you can uh, uh, video to the 2D surface and you can uh, just uh, play with the video uh, like the just uh, 2D in 3D uh, like use by using emotion library from the EFL. Uh, free transform of video object while playback. Yeah, this kind of features also provided. And at the color layer, there is a dry two direct rendering infrastructure version two. So, yeah, this is an extension to support the direct rendering in X window. And also, uh, there is a DRM uh, direct rendering manager, so that. Uh, there is no uh, unwanted copy from uh, this layer to this layer. So, sure. Okay. So uh, this is the last slide of the core connectivity command, uh, which is uh, driven by Intel with many uh, features, and EFL also gives a very uh, scalable UI. So, like uh, multi-size resolution aspect ratio of screens. Uh, continuous scaling is uh, provided. Okay, and this is the uh, IDE SDK part. We uh, give C++ JavaScript and uh, Eclipse-based CDT and JS JSDT and uh, support many OS like XP7, Ubuntu, and Mac. And this is a unified IDE for native and web. So we have implemented many plugins Eclipse plugins and the underlying uh, development uh, tools and the uh, emulator. So, okay, uh, this is the IDE and uh, multiple target it can be managed. So you can uh, plug in many devices or uh, emulator. You can uh, launch emulator and the device at the same time. And there is a UI builder for web and native, and there is emulator and event injector. Event injector is a uh, uh, simulating kind of uh, target specific event like call, SMS, sensor, or device orientation, location. Okay, so, and uh, we also gives the debugging facility based on GDB and locate and profiling. You can download the SDK and install from this URL. And this is just the app development workflow this, with this IDE. And finally, we give the low-level virtual machine toolchain. Because we do not uh, just focus on the uh, target ARM CPU, but also we target x86. So by using LLVM technology, the once uh, we get the uh, LLVM level intermediate bit code, that can be uh, translated into the machine code later. So we are almost uh, done with this uh, framework. So we can later uh, enable this for uh, multi-binary uh, support. And this is the brief summary of the Tizen 2.0 update. So as you see, many kind of features were introduced to web and native. And also for the core, and also for the ID and tools. Okay, so this is the conclusion. So Tizen is a standard-based open-source software platform on the Linux Foundation, and uh, yeah, offering uh, HTML5-based application APIs. So web is the primary uh, development environment, but we also give the native framework. And there are uh, three ray architecture from the Linux to the core to web and native framework. And Tizen SDK to that one will be uh, released soon. Okay, thank you. Could you give me some questions?
Okay. You mentioned on the web framework about the HTML5 support. Uh, what has been your experience with the supporting like video, like WebM, HTML? Video like, and? Like different standards of video. Video codex, video codex. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm not, uh, actually, I'm from the native framework, so yeah, web engineer can uh, reply to your question. So could you just uh, please uh, send me an email? I will give you a name card. OK. Yes, uh, MP runtime plugin is uh, provided from 2.0, so you can just uh, plug in the native uh, standard C based uh, library into the web. Yeah, if you want uh, more performance, for example. Thanks. Okay. Other so uh, please contribute much to the Tizen. We will expect on it. On Un un unexpected things from you, yeah, Thanks, from that. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.